Hey there, friends. It's Jen Pitta with By the Shore Stamping. Happy Teach Me Tuesday. Today, I'm actually going to uh, show you another project with the High Tide stamp set. I guess I'm on a mission to make you want this one. Um, I did a video a few weeks ago with this one, and we're doing it again. I was actually inspired to use this set by an a project in the catalog. So this is in the Spring Occasions catalog. You can see this little um, cutie up here. This is on page 25 of the Occasions catalog, the Stampin' Up! Occasions catalog. And you'll notice that we've got a little reflection te technique going on. So I really wanted to do that. And that's how this card came about. So I changed it up a little bit to make it my own, but I am using this stamp set again. Here is the card I'm going to show you so you can see the reflection down here, as well as some layering of color, which I'll show you as well. We're going to use um, one of the tools they introduced last year, um, one of the new ones. These are great. They're um, the disposable um, sponge brayers. You get two handles and four of these sponge things in each um, purchase, and so it's a really nice little addition to your tools. And you can rinse them out probably and use them again. I have some that are designated to certain colors, like this is my pool party one, and we're going to use my Sahara Sand one today. Um, so we're using, as I just mentioned, pool party cardstock. This is four and a quarter by 11, folded in half to make my card base. And then I have my Sahara Sand, which is um, five by four and a quarter, which is going to layer right on top of that one. And then a piece of Whisper White cardstock, which is three and three quarters by five, so that will layer perfectly on top of there. And then I'm also using a piece of window acetate, but we'll get to that in a moment. So first things first, I want to color my water. And I don't want it to be too, too dark, because I want to be able to see the reflection um, in my card so I'm going to go ahead and ink this up using my sponge brayer and you'll notice I'm going all the way across the ink pad you don't want to do this because then you'll get a large concentration of ink in one spot so you want to roll across the whole thing plus you want the whole roller to be inked so that when you roll across you're not running out of ink as you go so I'm going to roll all the way across the ink pad I'm going to start off the ink pad and then go on and that just prevents the really dark um, blob of ink when you first land on it. So if you start off of it, that blob ends up on your scrap paper instead of on your project. So I'm just going to roll right over that. And I'm just going to do probably just a couple of little layers because I, like I said, don't want it to be too dark. So there's my Sahara, I mean, I'm sorry, my pool party. Now I'm going to switch, whoops, I'm going to switch to my Sahara sand one. And we're going to fill in the shoreline. So I'm going to take the Sahara ink and again my Sahara roller and again I'm just going to go all the way across the ink pad, make sure it's getting fully inked, start off the, the paper that I want to roll and then I'm just going to layer on that um, Sahara sand. And I think my Sahara is getting a little dried out so I'm going to have to put a little more pressure to get the ink color that I want. And you'll notice that I'm overlapping the blue a little bit, and that's totally fine. You won't even notice when I'm done. Whoops, I kind of went astray there, but luckily it didn't take. Okay, now I'm going to add some of the um, water back in, because I don't want this to just look like a sponge background. I want it to look like water. So I'm going to use this water image from the High Tide stamp set and the pool party. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp off and then to my paper. And I'm starting from the top of the water line up here, not down here because I want to be able to just, I won't need the whole thing, so I just want it to be even so that I'm not overlapping too much. And it's harder to do that because then you're overlapping into the water if you start on the bottom, if that makes sense. And I'm going to stamp off and then line that up here. And it's really nice because this stamp set has, if you look, it's got like the little um, edge here that perfectly lines up with that one. So when you stamp it, you can just kind of nestle it into that other edge. I'm going to stamp off and one more here and stamp off, and one more here, okay? So there is the water for that one. Next up is to do my little birdies. So I'm using Early Espresso and the little birds from the set. And this is a nice dark silhouette, so it's really pretty. And of course, if this was at sunset, it would be a little dark silo silhouette. So I'm gonna do this just above the waterline, not even with the waterline. If you notice, I've got probably about a quarter of an inch in there. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp those straight down, straight up. Nice dark image. Oh, he had something on his eye, but that's all right. I'm gonna let that go. So there is that. Now, before we do the reflection, I do, right now it looks like they're kind of just floating because there's no definition in the grass, I mean in the sand. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little sand image. I don't know if you can see that. 
and I'm going to take my Sahara sand and I'm just going to add in some sand along their feet and I'm just going to pounce kind of once and then again just going along adding some texture and color to this so it looks like a shoreline. I'm going to go back and kind of fill in a little bit where I missed. There we go. So then we have, well, let me fix that too. There's like a little hole right there. Okay. So there we have them standing in the sand. And actually, it's too light back here now. I'm going to just roll over that a little bit more. Bring that out. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to do that. Now we're going to do our reflection technique. So to do that, we're going to take those birds again and our early espresso ink. And I have my little window acetate. And we're going to stamp right on this. Um, I actually don't want it to be as dark as these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stamp those birds off before I stamp on the acetate. Because when we stamp onto the acetate, that's what's going to transfer to our image. So here I'm going to ink up the little birds. And like I said, because I don't want them to be super dark, I'm going to stamp them here and then go, well, I guess I'll leave that little thing in his eye because it will match the other one, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this on the acetate. Be careful not to slide because this will want to scoot along the page here. So now you can see I have that on the acetate. Because this is a water-based ink on the acetate, if I rub this, it's going to come off, which is why it um, works for this technique. Um, but you don't want to rub your finger on it because that will make the little guys come off. So I don't know if you can see. So can you see them under there? So there they are. Now I'm going to flip that over because I want that ink to transfer to my cardstock. And I'm going to line them up with these birds. And I only want it to show in the water. So I'm going to line them up here like this. Now the reason why you want to do it this way and not just turn the paper over and stamp them again is because this will give you the actual mirror image of your birds. If you did it the other way it's going to be the opposite so this guy would be on this side and it wouldn't mirror what was above them. So I'm just going to rub this with my finger and because I used a second generation of this I am going to kind of make sure I'm pressing a little bit to make sure the the whole thing transfers. Now I'll pick that up. Oh, it's super light, but you know what I found is I can put that back down and I can actually really rub now. And it still won't come off because that ink is still on the back of that acetate, so it's not going to be missing. It's still there. So I just need to press a little harder to get a little bit more um, coverage of those birds. So that's really cool. You can't really mess it up. You just need to kind of keep working at it. We use a little, what do they call that? Um, muscle? No. Elbow grease. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. So now we can take that off and you'll see the reflection is better. And he still looks wonky with his eye. I should have fixed that, but that's okay. You won't really notice that when I'm done. So next up, I wanted to do something for the sky. Um, but because one, I didn't have any more of these sponge brayers that were even, uh, or clean rather, I also wanted to show you a way to do this with just the sponges. And actually, this works out really well because I don't want, you look at the original, I don't want an even coverage like these. So these were even all the way across. This you'll notice there's more yellow around the sun because I wanted it to look like it was brighter there, okay? So in order to do that, I took my sponge and I want really light yellow across the whole thing. So I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to blot it off because I don't want any really dark blobs of yellow. And then I'm just going to rub it along here. Starting at the dirt line. And I'm just going to... You do have to be careful with this because it's not as easy to get a nice even... Um, see how it's kind of blotchy here? So it is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to swirl in some color here to get it all evened out. So you'll see the sponge dauber is much, the sponge brayer rather, is much easier to control than this. But it will still work. Okay, so there's my yellow sky. All right, and then I'm going to take the sun image also from the stamp set. And I'm going to stamp that up in the upper corner because that's where I want the sun to be coming from. 
Okay, and then what I can do is I can use this sponge now to recreate or to create some rays of sun. Um, you'll notice there is a ray stamp that you can use for the lighthouse beacon or for your rays of sun, but in this case it was just too big for the card. So instead, what I did is I took my sponge, I blotted a little bit, and then I'm just kind of folding it into like a little line here. And I'm just going to pull the color to make like rays. So you can see that I'm getting that ray look without actually doing the rays from the stamp set. So that's also why I wanted to use the sponge in this case, because that gave me a little bit more ability to ink up spots in more concentration than others. All right, so the last step for this is to do our greeting. And I thought the um, one that says in high tide or low tide, I'll be by your side would be perfect for this one, since it's kind of like the tide picture. I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up with the early espresso, so the same that I used with the birds. And I'm gonna stamp it just above the water line here, so even with the sand. So pretty, okay. Now, um, I had to add something to it, so I wanted to add a little bit of twine, so I took my white baker's twine, and I cut myself enough to wrap it around a couple times. And um, a trick for this when you're doing this, so I want my bow to land over here. So I'm gonna start with some extra space here, because I'm gonna need some here to tie my bow. So I'm gonna hang on to that with a little hanging. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it a couple times. Actually, I can probably do three times with the amount that I cut here. So I will do that. And right now I don't really worry too much about its position because I can fix it afterwards. And now I'm just gonna tie the little bow. So I find it easier with the twine to actually tie a knot first. So you can see I'm holding that in place with my thumb there and then I tie it, and now I'm gonna go ahead and tie the little bow, now that it's stationary and easier to work with. It does make it kind of go on a little um, slant, but it doesn't bother me, so we're gonna do that. All right, so there we have our little bow, and sometimes you have to fiddle with it to make it lay straight there. I'll try and twist it as best as I can. Use my ribbon scissors to cut that. Okay, fiddle with it a little more. All right, so there is our little finished stamped part. Oh, I got some yellow in there. Whoopsie, can't really see it, thankfully. I'm gonna go ahead and tape that on. You can see I messed up. I was doing a video and I forgot to stamp off, so I had to start over. Ha ha. It's not even in the morning and I'm still wonky. Okay, so that goes down like that. And then I just did it flat on the card base as well. Like that. And then just cause I wanted a little something else, I took the really teeny tiny pearls. Um, from our pearls, and I just added a few kind of sporadically here. Oops, these are really hard to do when you don't have your scissors. Oh, I just sent it flying. Whoopsie. All right, poke an eye out. Okay, there you go. And there is your finished card. Super easy technique, but it adds just a lot of pop and and flair to your cards. So you could do this with anything. You could do it with trees, you can do it with the lighthouse, you could do it with the birds. You can do it with really anything that you put set on the water. So I hope you enjoyed that little technique and that you'll join me again for Teach Me Tuesday next week. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any of my future ones. Thank you so much. And you can always find me at www.bytheshorestamping.com. Have a great day.